Is it possible to make exercise stress-free? Hi, Dr. Cheryl here with Total Health with Dr. Cheryl. My honored guest today is Dr. Soma, who is a friend and colleague. She actually beat the Durango Silverton Railroad train going over two mountain passes when she was riding her bike. How did she do that? And How it was stress-free. And it was stress-free. <laughs> How did you do that, stress-free? Well, I, I had never ridden a, a road bike before in my life, before this race, and it's a race um, over two mountain passes in Durango, Colorado, and it's called the Iron Horse because you're beating the train. Um, and I didn't think that sounded very stress-free, but, <laughs> no. but I learned a wonderful technique that has applied in a lot of things in my life and can be used by elite athletes, um, and it can be used by anybody which is really cool so people fragile folks that exercise isn't necessarily easy so fibromyalgia um, chronic fatigue syndrome um, any sort of itises um, this is a wonderful way of coming at exercise which we all know is an important part moving your body we don't have to use the bad word exercise but we can use um, moving our body so this is a wonderful breathing technique and I know that I'll never be an elite athlete. And when someone was telling me about this technique, I got excited because when I even go on my walks up a hill, I'm breathing heavily through my mouth. And I thought that was a good thing. I thought that was getting me conditioned. But come to learn, there's another viewpoint on that. Tell yes. us about it. We have this thing on our face called our nose, and actually it's for breathing. Who knew? <laughs> and when you use it to breathe, um, it can actually act as a governor and it can help our body have a stress-free experience of moving, of movement. And it can also keep us from overdoing it because that's what I've noticed with my fibromyalgia patients is anything is overdoing it. And this is an amazing way to keep that from happening. So it's a governor. That's so important because even my patients with adrenal fatigue, I tell them only exercise to the point that you feel better afterwards. And usually they overdo it first and then have to back off. So they can know now a different way to when they're actually doing the exercise, to when to stop or when to slow it down, right? Yes, this is a wonderful way. So um, basically you'll be breathing through your nose. Um, so the first part of this, there's three, three phases to do this when you're going to go and, and move your body a little bit. You can do this inside, you can do this outside, you can do this wherever. Um, but you want to breathe through your nose um, and you want some tissues. In the beginning, your nose will adapt. Um, your nose is going to do this really well because that's what it's made for. Um, it's made to hydrate, it's made to filter, um, it's made to help us experience life a little bit differently um, than when we breathe through our mouth. So the first step is closing your mouth um, and then breathing through your nose. You want to do 10 big deep breaths. So it'll feel kind of awkward in the beginning, um, but don't let that bother you. Um, so take 10 deep breaths in and out from the belly, right? Yes. And an interesting part of this is we're actually focusing on the exhalation. So bring the air in through your nose and then push it all out with your tummy muscles. And you're gonna notice that when you push it all out, the first part of the inhalation just happens. You just let your tummy muscles go and it fills up. It's effortless, it's wonderful. So you push all the air out. And then that first part of the inhalation pulls air really deep down into your lungs where it's yummy and there's lots of blood supply and it's a great thing. So you do 10 of those big deep breaths. Should I be getting lightheaded from this? You can get a little bit dizzy. It's because you're getting so much amazing air <laughs> that your body's adapting. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad. It's just different. So yes, you might feel a little lightheaded, you might feel a little dizzy. You can certainly sit down and do this in the beginning. Um, but after your 10 big deep breaths, um, you're basically ready to start moving. So you can do this while you're moving if you want to. I used to do it while I was driving into the gym or wherever I was going. Um, and then once you're ready to move, the next step is actually breathing through your nose while you're moving. So you wanna walk and you wanna breathe through your nose 
right to the point that it feels like you need to breathe through your mouth, okay? So you might wanna, if you're walking, you go up a hill or lift your knees up higher, but breathe through your nose this whole time and just when you feel like, wow, this is getting hard, just stop, okay? And recover through your nose. So when it feels like you're wanting to open your mouth and breathe in because you're feeling like, wow, I need a little bit more air, that's your signal. And it may be very early in the whole thing. Um, it may only take three steps and you gotta listen to that. So what you wanna do is get right to that point where you say, this is getting a little hard and stop. It may not be very much. So you stop, get back to where it's very comfortable breathing through your nose again, and then do that again. Okay. So this is real interesting. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with my heart rate. Not right now. It's no. It's what's going on with my breathing and needing to yes, breathe deeper. Exactly. Um, so you wait and you listen to your body and when your body, when it starts feeling hard, okay, stop, breathe through your nose until it doesn't feel hard anymore. You want to do that five times. So you want to speed up slow, and stop and breathe through your nose and speed up and then stop. You're gonna do that five times. That's basically like a warm up. That's your warm up for your lungs um, and the wonderful blood vessels that are gonna carry all this lovely oxygen. They need to be kind of stretched and that's actually what you're doing is warming them up a little bit. So you do want to get to the point where you're almost out of breath, where you yes, feel like you need. Exactly. So you don't want to keep it under that in the in initial part. Right, exactly. Okay. So that's the, the warm up part. Then you want to get to, and you'll have the experience of knowing where that point is, okay? What, what it feels like in your body, and then you want to back off, stop. Then once you do that warm up, the five warm ups, um, or speed up, slow down, then you want to get into what's called steady state, and that's when you're doing your walk, okay? And you want to be able to breathe through your nose, doing the steady state for at least five minutes, all right? So this isn't hard. Okay, you're not hurting yourself. This isn't painful. This is fun and relaxing and you're gonna notice things and you're breathing through your nose the whole time. Kind of sounds like Darth Vader. So. And we wanna go as far, hard as we can without going over the limit. Exactly. Okay. Well, and just a little bit under that. You don't mm -hmm. wanna go, cause you're gonna notice what's gonna happen. And yeah, don't believe me about any of this. Go do it yourself and find out. But you're gonna notice you're gonna get to go farther. You may walk farther in the same five minutes each time you do it. Mm -hmm. If you practice this, you're going to start noticing, but it's not gonna feel any harder. Your body's gonna be able to do more, but it's not gonna feel like it's hard. And that's the real exciting thing about this. And on the other hand, you don't want to keep it too relaxed and too right. slow that you're not right. almost reaching that barrier. Exactly. Okay. Right. So go to the barrier and then just a little bit below and keep it there. Um, and when you feel like it's getting too hard, you got to slow down. You just slow down your walking. But you, you do it solid for about five minutes or whatever whatever Dr. Charles tells you or however, however you've been instructed. Um, but try to keep it steady for a little bit. Um, and you can start off with a goal of five minutes um, and then you can stop and, and try breathing through your nose more. It's a lot of fun. And that's it? That's it. Wow. You know, I want to hear more about how you went over those two mountain passes, oh. passes without opening your mouth to yes, breathe. Yes. Tell me about it's, that. It's a lot of fun. And what, what the feedback, basically you have to train and, and that's where heart rate becomes involved. So if you want to do something really athletic, um, breathing takes energy, okay? When we're breathing a lot, um, it actually uses energy, especially through our mouth. And you can do that right now. You know, and you really can't pant through your nose. It doesn't really work. <laughs> so, so when you're doing this with um, an athletic event, I went from breathing maybe 30 times a minute down to 15 times a minute. Um, and that's half of the breathing. So I was on this bicycle for a little over three hours beating the train. It takes the train a little over four hours to get there. Um, but I was on a bicycle for, <laughs> for three hours having the best time of my life. And it's because when you do this deep breathing with, through your nose, you're actually stimulating the vagus nerve, which is a wonderful relaxation nerve. So your body is getting the, the information that you're not stressed, you're doing great. 
everything's wonderful. I don't need to be running away from things. My, I'm at a state of rest. So I got to the second mountain peak and people are, you know, clanging bells and they're all excited for you. And evidently I had a really big smile on my face because a whole bunch of people commented, you're not going very fast when you're going up a mountain, so you can talk with people. <laughs> <laughs> well, there they said, my gosh, you look like you're having fun. Everybody else looks destroyed and all upset and like they're stressed. And I said, well, I'm not. It feels great. Um, so you can actually get to where you have a pretty high heart rate. So my heart rate would be 150, um, which is pretty high. I tend to have a little higher heart rate because I'm little, but um, and you're not feeling stressed. Um, your body is actually in this wonderful state and I'm only breathing 15 times a minute with that heart rate. So you can train, you can do this. Um, so it's training your respiratory system um, as opposed to just training your cardiovascular system or things and we're used to. And how was it com of you with your smile on your face biking <laughs> up that hill compared to the other competitors in that race? Well, they were wiped out by that point because we'd been on our bikes for quite a while. <laughs> but, and it, it's just your body it doesn't experience the stress because it's getting a different input by breathing through your nose, by using this big muscle of respiration called the diaphragm, um, using that muscle the way it was intended and oxygenating your body so well, it's, it's an amazing, stress-free, lovely experience of movement. And you brought up another question I had. What if I'm walking with a friend? Do I have to keep my mouth shut or can I talk to that friend when I'm when I'm walking? If you're truly doing the nose breathing, you both should be in silence together, which can be a lovely experience. Okay. Um, and it's a great thing for kids. We've taught it to children and the teachers love it because when you're nose breathing, you can't be talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so every show they with the teachers would say, everybody not breathe in your nose. And it actually brings you to this wonderful peace and presence. Um, you're back in your body and your body is ready to do what it needs to do. Great. How can our viewers know more about what you do in your business, Total Health um, Life Concept? I've, I'm part of Total Life Concept or TLC. We're tlcdurango.com and we're very um, involved in food focus and fitness. So what you eat matters. Um, your focus, are you calm and alert at the same time? Um, and then fitness. Fitness should be part of all of our worlds. We, we used to take a hike to go pee in the old days uh, because we, it was frowned upon to pee in the cave. I can only imagine the mommy saying, no, no, don't pee in the cave, no, no. <laughs> so we had to take walks, okay? Now imagine having to take a hike every time you need to use the bathroom. We've lost a lot of movement and actually doesn't take a whole lot of movement to keep our bodies healthy mm. and resilient. So that's a lot of what we talk about is how can you make movement part of your life and how can you eat and then how can you be calm and alert at the same time. So that movement that we're getting more into our life, we now should do with our mouth shut Yes, and try. breathing through the nose. Yes. So it's a lot of fun. I would encourage you to try it. Thank you so much. Certainly. <laughs>